everybody, welcome back to my workshop here in Los Angeles, and we're about to do a eighth grade project. Now, this is something I do here at my school. I've been doing it for a long time, um, and the value of it in the curriculum is that it gives a, uh, an opportunity for the eighth graders to use um, this rational judgment about sequencing the steps that they need to do to get from uh, the start to the finish. Now, there are maybe three or four or five maybe five steps that they're going to have to go through. But the very first one, um, in order to make one of these three-legged stools, is that they need to cut their lumber that they're going to be using for the seat. Now, this particular stool is what they're making right now in my classes. Uh, this one's been coated with a polyurethane finish, so it's got a bit of a shine to it. And when you oil them and when you put that finish on them, it turns a more yellow color. Now this is what the wood looks like when it begins. This is pine, and um, this is the exact same kind of wood, but after it's had all of its finish. So I'm going to walk you through the steps on how to make this project. I'll tell you a little bit about the tools that we're going to need to use. You're going to need a hammer at some point during this process, and of course a saw. And um, you know these live saws are some of my favorite saws that I have in the in the uh, wood shop. You know. Um, and I'll be using this, and, um, and of course a rasp. These are the main tools you're going to be needing. Now, you, you may be able to see this, um, this piece of equipment here that I made. This is for boring the holes. Okay, it's a jig that's set up so it'll give you the exact angle that you need to bore these holes in so that you have the correct angle of the legs. So this will be a different video we're going to show how to make this, but you need to have a boring... Um, bit to be able to get through that and in this case it's an inch and a half wide is the hole diameter but i want to start with this beginning part which is the very first day in the wood shop in the eighth grade so of course after we've gone through you know all the warnings about safety and you know how to uh, to operate your tools in a safe careful way then they need to begin with their wood and um, I'll have several pieces about this size, and I'll have a couple of kids working on each piece, like as, as a team, where they can share the projects and, you know, uh, share the tools and be able to communicate with each other about exactly what they're doing. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to first measure how wide the seat can be. So with this particular board, it's about 11 and 3 eighths of an inch wide. So I want to measure 11 and 3 eighths of an inch long and that's where I'm going to make a mark and that's where we're going to make our cut. So here we go we got the square here that we're going to use for the seat. Now the next step is to find the center. So this is not something that children are unfamiliar with. Now we're going to make our own um, compass here because I found that a regular camp compass that they're using in their classrooms won't open up big enough. So if you have an extra large compass, that's great. If not, you can make your own. It's very simple. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a small nail right here in the center. Okay. And then the next thing is you need a little scrap of wood uh, from somewhere in your shop that's going to be at least the radius of a circle from this middle point. Now, I'm going to use my knife to make a small notch on the end of this little board that we're using. Okay, so this will go up against the nail like this. Now, that's going to be our, the radius will be all the way out to here. And that should hold the same for no matter where you have it on the board. And you know that you have it correctly centered. Okay, and then I'm going to put a little mark, a little notch right here, and that's where my pencil will be able to sit in. And then we have a compass. It's custom made for this project. Okay, so that's where the pencil will fit in, like that. And then we simply push like this, and we draw our circle. We're going to use the compass again, but we've got to put a nail in. So I'm going to put it in right here on this cross piece, on this cross mark, and that's where we're going to begin this next step. And we make a mark here. 
Okay, and then we do that again all the way around the circle. We're dividing the circle into six equal parts. So now we have six marks here. So we're going to connect these points by making two triangles. Okay, there's one of our triangles, and this will be our next triangle. Okay, so what I'm marking right now is uh, the point at which we're going to be drilling or uh, boring the hole. So the point of the drill will go in right about here. The way you find that is by, first you want to have a mark that goes all the way th from side to side, and you go halfway between this measurement. And in this case, it's one three eighths. Okay, so this is going to be one of our holes here. The other hole is going to be over here. I'm going to mark that so that we can measure it. And the other one's going to be right here. Now this would be one three eighths. And one three eighths right there. And we're going to be cutting, putting our holes. So the next step then, after we've made our layout marks for where the holes will be for the legs, cut these corners off, and then cut the small corners off, and then we should have a fairly decent round starting point. So now we've got these corners cut off, and we've got a, a fairly round shape beginning to show here. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, rasp the rest of these little corners off to the left there. Okay, that looks pretty round. Yep, pretty round. Looks like a wheel to me. So the next step then is we're going to go ahead and bore these holes. And we're going to use this, um, this piece of equipment I call a boring jig. So I'm going to set it up here so that um, my drill will go right in the lowest hole. And that hole has to be centered. So I have made a mark on my jig where the center is. And I'm going to line this point up with that center hole, centered mark. And then I'm going to clamp my project in so it's not going to move around on me. So once I've got my clamps clamping this piece in really good so it's not going to move around, I'm going to go ahead and start boring it right there at that spot we marked. I usually have the students help each other in this process because it's easy to forget one of the little steps and it's much harder to go back up and redo it. Okay, so there's our three holes. Okay, our bottom and our top. Now I went ahead and I cut some of this pine into uh, one and a half by one and a half by one and a half square legs. Usually around 14, 15 inches is about a good height for a stool. The next task is to round them and fit them in the holes. So I'm going to mark an X here on the bottom. Gives me an idea where the center should be lined up. So I've got this circle that I'm going to be cutting out with a knife. And trial and error, I'm going to be fitting it in the hole and see how it works. I'd come up about one inch from the end and make that corner as round as you possibly can, use just using a knife. Now when you're working with the students doing this, they're going to be tempted to just go like this. And what happens is you get off round and it becomes really doesn't fit in the hole. There's gaps. It looks horrible. So you really might want to make this nice and fit tightly. And then once you got it more or less round, you can see you might have to make a little bit of adjustments here and there, but you don't want to take too much off this first first attempt. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and put it in the hole and see if it fits or not. And we just jam it in there and kind of twist it around. It looks pretty good to me looking at it from this side. And you'll see where there's like a, a gray mark, a rub mark around the edge where it fits in the hole. So it's fitting into the hole about that far. So now I, I know that I'm good up from here to the end, I'm good. I don't want to take any more off of that because it's fitting nice and snug. So now I want to take off this section in here, down further, so that it'll go in deeper. So again, you don't want to take more than you need because you can't make the wood grow back if you take taking too much. You just have to start over again. 
So you just take a little bit at a time. And you don't want to cut anywhere past where that gray mark is because then you're going to make it uh, not fit anymore. It's going to be two loops. So it's going in this deep. You can see the rub marks on it. So I'm going to cut off a little bit more down here. So you want the, the end of the leg to come out just a little bit beyond the surface here. And now if you bang it in there too, too much, you're going to end up splitting your wood. Okay, so now you see that it's just coming out about an eighth of an inch. So that's going to be deep enough for this leg. Okay, so you repeat this process for each one of the legs. Once you get all three legs fitted in, now the next step is to go ahead and round each one of the legs. You can use the knife, you can use the rasp, or you can use a plane. Okay, so you saw the process of preparing the legs. First you get it to fit in the hole, and then you start planing the corners down or rasping. I use a combination of the plane and the rasp, and then finally you want to get in there and um, sand it the rest of the way smooth. Okay, so here's the bottom, and here's the top. So what you want to do is you want to round the bottom edge along here. So you can use three basic methods to get the edge rounded. You can use a spokeshave, you can use a little hand plane, or you could just simply use the grasp. When you get that rounded, then you're going to come back and sand it. Okay, around that whole, the whole outside edge. And now I'm going to sand off these pencil marks. Okay, now we're ready for the next step. We're going to make a saw cut here perpendicular to where the grain is. So the grain's going this way. I'm going to make a saw cut right about here. So now I'm, I'm uh, going to cut these wedges. Now I've already pre-cut some of these. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, make these wedges the exact width of the hole. These are hardwood wedges. Uh, this particular type of wood is walnut. I've chosen walnut because it's a much darker wood and once it's actually installed it actually looks quite beautiful. It's functional and it uh, gives you a contrast between a darker wood and a lighter wood. So now that we've got these wedges prepared, the legs are prepared, they've got the saw cuts in them, the stool itself is prepared, we've got the routed uh, bottom edge on it. We're going to fit the legs into the holes, then we're going to fit the wedges into the legs. Okay, when it starts going and you feel it, you don't want to go any further, then you stop. I'm going to cut the tops of these legs off. I got one of them off. Come in here and get the other, other two. Now if you keep your saw level with the top of the stool. You shouldn't have to do too much sanding. It'll be it'll be a nice easy clean cut. Okay, so once we've got these cut off, then it's just a matter of sanding this surface down. And whatever you got left of the legs that are sticking up, that'll come off now. So I've been sanding and sanding this thing. You know, the top is quite nice and smooth now. Remember, uh, you want to sand with the grain when you get towards the last bit of your sanding. Make sure you get all the blemishes off the legs, and the tops, the edges. Now, this is where I get really picky with the kids. It drives them crazy, but, you know, especially if we still have three or four more weeks in the, in, in the term, you know, I don't want them to be... Uh, sitting around doing nothing so I just really make sure that they do a great job of sanding. And now the last step. You notice how these legs are not flush with the surface that they're sitting on. And sometimes one leg will be a little bit longer or one leg will be a little bit shorter. So you need to even that up so that this ends up being level. So the way I do that is I flip it over and then I use a tool like this and I lay it right up next to the to the leg and I look at it and see what the measurement is. So in this case it is comes out to about ten and a half inches, maybe ten and three eighths inches to the lowest part here. Let's see what this one is. This is uh, again this is about about ten and three eighths to the lowest part there. 
and then this is like 10 and a half. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark on each one of these 10 and 3 eighths of an inch. Make sure that I get the same mark on each leg. Then the next step that I like to do is I go ahead and I go across from leg to leg. Okay, so the next step then, uh, it's a simple matter of just cutting those off at that angle. You can see there that I mark. I can go ahead and use that. Come back to the sandpaper, clean up the edge. I'm gonna make sure all your pencil lines are off. But that looks pretty good to me. I would buy that. Okay, I would I would call that a nice stool right there. It's nice and level. Everything's been done properly. So at this point, we're ready to go ahead and oil it. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and do the bottom. Now this is really a beautiful part of it where it goes into this walnut, the hardwood wedges. And that oil really brings out the color in those wedges. Here we are, we got this beautiful stool completed. Didn't take us too long, um, but again, I've made about a hundred of them, so I, I know how to do it. With the kids, it's a little bit longer. Um, they really look forward to making this stool. Mm -hmm. They've seen this from the time they came into fifth grade. Uh, they see the projects around the studio here, and they say, I can't wait to get to eighth grade where I can make a stool. So that's it. Um, join us in the next video so that you can learn how to make the boring jig so that you can make these too. Bye-bye.